Anna Maria. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, it's um, it's so wonderful to to have a chance to talk to you. I've um, followed you on Instagram and see uh, your wonderful page. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a big pleasure <laughs> for me as well. <laughs> so tell me, um, I first want to talk a, a little bit about uh, how you manage through through lockdown. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can talk about your new pr exciting projects. But uh, uh, where were you during lockdown? Uh, during all of the lockdowns, I was actually in Vienna. Yeah. Um, which uh, was a little bit surreal for me to be in uh, such a big city, but not be able to to enjoy any of the of the perks of such a big city. So I was, uh, we all were not able to 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 go in um, and listen to concerts, to to go to exhibitions, all the kinds of cultural stuff that I really enjoy uh, in the everyday life, um, and also meeting friends and these kinds of things, of course, mm -hmm. were not possible. Which um, yeah, made it very difficult to 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 cope with this situation mm. because, um, of course, it, it's possible nowadays. We have so many possibilities uh, when it comes to technology to 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 connect and to to be in touch, which is great. Just as we are doing now. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> yes. But still, I think like that the biggest um, the biggest lack that. I was feeling in those times was the personal contact with meeting mm. people, um, being able to enjoy things in person, like really have mm. those experiences. But as a as a cellist, then um, how did you? Uh, because you you had to practice, of course, and and get go keep going. How did you motivate yourself? Um. Well, to be honest, in the very first lockdown, mm. when this whole situation came upon us and it was like such a big surprise or shock, in the very beginning, it was really difficult for me because um, I was, I had many plans, I had many concerts scheduled, I was um, preparing for so many things and suddenly there was this huge cut and everything was gone. So all the preparation was for, of course, not for nothing. It's never for nothing, but um, it was kind of suddenly there was this huge empty hole in my agenda, <laughs> which yeah. for me is very difficult because um, I somehow need this. Um, I'm a little bit of a workaholic, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I really need to have many projects. So I'm like always on the run, always doing things and, and always being active, always doing many things parallel also. So um, in terms of that, it was very difficult to accept. Mm -hmm. Hey, now there's like this forced break and you have to just think, okay, what, how am I going to, um, motivate myself or like um just just make a plan how to um continue working uh the good thing was that i also felt like i had the possibility to work on some stuff that maybe because of many projects before i was not able to work on time wise so i would like um play through all the Bach suites <laughs> or learn some okay. new solo repertoire um and yeah that was really also very nice but then mm -hmm. very soon after that we started doing little projects with with friends with colleagues video recordings mm -hmm. little interesting new ideas for future projects and and um yeah that was the first lockdown and later on it became a little bit easier for me because I think we all 
got used to the situation, we could kind of accept, okay, another lockdown is coming, but we know at some point there will be, again, a better time we will be able to, to perform. And um, yeah, so we could just um, continue planning on that. Mm-hmm. Um, what was very um, helpful for me was this, time gap uh, in between, I think it was like between June and October, Mm. where I somehow ended up having a lot, a lot of concerts, performances, projects, I was traveling. Mm. Yes, it was really nice because somehow I felt like finally I could breathe. (laughs) And um, some really interesting things came up, um, which, I think would not have come up um, if there was no pandemic Mm -hmm. because for instance I started being way more active on on social media Mm -hmm. uh, for example and I got to to uh, connect with people um, who might not have heard about me in that sense Mm -hmm. if it weren't for the pandemic and some really interesting projects came out of that. and yes, this time was uh, very much uh, helpful for me to to cope mm-hmm. with that whole um, situation. But then, of course, after October in Austria, again, there was this big cut and yeah. we're just now starting again. And mm-hmm. it's a wonderful feeling really to suddenly have I... so many things in the calendar. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And and did you also feel the one that the last one was a difficult one, um, the, the last lockdown? Yes, I think also um, in exchange, talking with, with colleagues and, and friends, I think it was so difficult also because we are all really tired already. Mm. Um, and um, I think maybe to some extent it was not really understandable why some things are possible while culture is in complete lockdown I guess so for me it was really difficult from time to time when I was like one of my um one of the things that I was doing a lot during all the lockdowns was just walking around the city Mm -hmm. like really a lot just just going out of my house and just walking around just discovering tiny little new uh corners and uh it was really difficult for me to see um many people in shops for instance Mm. like really uh many people in um shopping malls or things like that why while we were not able to perform at all so that was yeah some some things that maybe were difficult uh, to understand for people working in culture. I think I think our awareness of all has become greater, you know, that yeah. uh, with uh, with many things, you know, you would never have you would never notice, say, for instance, busy shops or uh, busy places if if it wasn't that uh you were restricted in a way so you Mm. it's i think we tend to see things in that way so if you are restricted then you notice how other people are not i think in that Mm. way so i i totally agree with you that that awareness came and that i think that also the awareness of the value of art or how uh, you know how people see it as a side thing or an entertainment thing and not a valuable part of uh, society and and I I don't know much about uh, economical things but I would just think uh, in Vienna for instance the theaters uh, you know and the concerts they um, they should bring in so much revenue that I wondered why they were not some of the first things that uh, you know were opened and also that the theaters take so much care and the artists take so much care of how they uh, deal with this situation um, 
Yeah, so I agree with you there. It's it's interesting that it happened. Do you feel that in, in this time, because you mentioned now that you did uh, performances that you might not ne- have done before, that uh, overall artists are more uh, sort of... Uh, tuned into each other and that they are more connected now in a way? I think so, yeah. I think there were some wonderful things going on. Um, For me, for instance, it was amazing that I could attend, attend Mm -hmm. (laughs) concerts, performances, um, workshops that in uh, without the pandemic would not have been uh, possible for me to attend because um let's say i don't know a master class um held by a professor in in warsaw mm. um that was then held online so obviously i would not have had the time or the possibility at that point mm. to travel to warsaw but like this i just clicked in on the internet and i could watch it for 2 hours and then continue with with my work, um, many performances like little concerts by friends, um, which sometimes when you are performing yourself are difficult to attend because there are many rehearsals, many things going on, and then um, you have to count, I don't know, the way to go somewhere for two hours to travel to the concert. So I think these kinds of things um, happened. We were um, able to, support each other a lot I think also that um because of the fact that we were all in this together we kind of had this feeling of like that we want to support each other even more than Mm. we do usually so I think that many people were sharing reposting performances by their friends colleagues and and yeah I think um that in terms of that, maybe there are some new interesting possibilities that we discovered. Maybe now we can also be a little bit more open to networking, maybe also networking a little more um, between different fields, like like doing interdisciplinary projects like this. So, oh, yeah. 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 Mm. Yes. And um, yeah, I hope there will be some some positive things that will stay mm-hmm. that we can take out of there and and see that okay maybe um these are some tools that we can use in the future also mm-hmm. but i also really really hope that now people audiences people in general understand the value of mm-hmm. of art and of culture and that maybe Now people will be so hungry for that, that there will be much more exchange and and much more going on and yeah. I, yeah, I asked, sorry, did you want to say something? Uh, No, Uh, no, the only thing I wanted to say uh, was that for me, it was very, very, very difficult not to have a live audience. Like this is something that it's, I mean, you can do all kinds of, of really nice projects that are filmed, mm-hmm. but um, this energy, somehow this this interaction with the audience is like the most important. And this was something that for me was really so difficult to accept that I cannot interact with my audience and, and have this special moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And have that energy. That's what uh, everybody that I talk to say that you know that that energy. And and actually, I didn't I didn't understand it very well uh, when I started this project, um, because I thought applause is really uh, um, just a, you know an end a thank you appreciation. But I didn't realize how the the artists actually feel the audience, you know, and 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 sense the audience and and get this energy. Uh, and this is amazing for me to hear. And it's it's actually opened my eyes also, you know, to uh, to that. And and uh, I th- I saw it as a as a, um, um, as a selfless sort of 
or idea of of the artist just giving uh, and and the audience afterwards just applauding for the five mm -hmm. minutes or what. But but I realized that it's really this this uh, give and take situation in a live performance that's so important. Absolutely, really, it's also like right in the moment of playing you 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 sense this I, I it's difficult to describe but it's just something that you know are really having an impact on somebody at this very moment that you can share and it's also not that we we just give we also receive a lot from the audience mm -hmm. it's really like that and then of course things like I don't know after show um exchange with people when they come and and tell you maybe like sometimes there are very intimate moments that you can share with people like very beautiful little um connecting moments i really enjoyed this a lot and and it's difficult to reproduce it in in a artificial space that we have here now on um, yeah social media or or whatever mm. But I, I think about, well, I thought about this a lot when I, when I photographed everybody, um, and, and that is that I now have an insight, a little bit of an insight, and also to talking to artists. Um, and of course, uh, and, and the time that I, that I photographed, I was invited many times for a coffee and, and so in, in their homes, and, and we talked, and I saw a totally different side to, to many artists. And I wonder sometimes, and, and, and also that we talk about, like you say now, that we talk about the art and talk about uh, uh, what you are doing. And I wonder sometimes if for some people, the, the artists seem very distant because you are um, on stage and you are, uh, you know, it, it's so overwhelming what you do and, and how you do it that, you know, it feels very much distant. And I, for myself, for example, um, I never, have, you know, I, I always feel a bit insecure to go and speak to an artist to say, you know, how wonderful it is. And, and now you saying to me that you enjoy this type of interaction. And I just always would feel, oh, I don't want to disturb them after this long performance or be in their way. And, um, but, but, I'm asking artists if, if you think maybe that uh, there could be a, a, a better connection between the artists and the audience beyond the stage, not just, you know, mm. during the performance, you have this connection, but, but then beyond to, to talk about, specifically talk about the art um, and, and talk about what you are doing, talking about the music you are playing and why you're playing and what you're enjoying so that, uh, you know, the audience sort of understand also a little bit more mm -hmm. of, of what you do. Absolutely. I think um, from my experience, for instance, I am playing a lot of contemporary music. Um, which is something that I really enjoy and I love, but I'm also aware of the fact that there are many people who maybe cannot really connect with this kind of music or this um, kind of art so well. Um, therefore, when I play solo recitals, which I uh, play frequently and I, I um, program a lot of contemporary pieces, I'm always trying to kind of uh, moderate a bit and to talk to the audience and to to tell them a little bit like just interesting facts to 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 kind of guide them and help them to maybe understand why did I choose that beat and yeah. the, the personal aspect and I think that in general um, what you said I think it's very interesting because when you involve people in this kind of like personal point of view that you have um, you can connect much better on a much better way and sometimes people would would maybe think that some artist is uh, he's just living somewhere with his exactly. head in the cloud yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And then, yeah so I think it it's it's mm. it's just so important to really have this exchange and then you can see that I don't know whatever profession a person in the audience is doing that okay 
there are so many parallels. This is like, I have my passion, you have your passion and your art mm -hmm. is your passion and I have my passion in this and we can find some, some um, common language. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yes, I think, I think it can also open a lot of new paths if we really connect in that kind of way that we just really try to understand um, somebody from a personal point of view. And I also had um, situations like that when even I was um, observing somebody from afar and ad admiring an artist. And then I got to know that person, for instance, and you have some strange expectations or like think that person might be like this or that. But most of the times I was really, really um, surprised in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like I had an amazing feeling because I realized those people are just genuinely lovely oh, I, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I totally agree. I mean, I've, I've photographed around 500 people, 500 artists. And I must say, they are all, they were so lovely and and shared so much with me and uh you know so that this is is, is is true what you say you know that lovely and and for me also you know i was sometimes thinking oh but how, how would they agree to do this for me because i'm really just somebody with a camera but but that they were so sincere and and um yeah and so open to this this is wonderful mm -hmm. but i do think the artists have this type of um attitude also you know this openness and and acceptance and um, um can see something and can understand you know it, it can understand what this is all about and so on so i think you have this ability through the fact that you're doing this art your art mm -hmm. Mm. yeah I think it's also um there's also a lot of empathy involved in in, in yeah. doing arts I think you can or I don't know at least for me I'm always thinking about maybe how people would receive my art not in terms of that I would change something so that I please people but I I'm always like questioning okay what what for instance when I'm doing projects um where we improvise a lot with with my mm -hmm. colleagues so i'm trying to um to always think uh, what what are topics or what are feelings that that mm -hmm. are really um important for people and that we would like to tackle now and and really maybe through that get some connection with the audience and mm -hmm. And I think it's there are some really magical things happening when when you really have this this connection. And I think people can be really moved by arts, um, not only in good ways. So that's also one aspect that I think is very important. That art, for me, does not always have to be beautiful, and it does not always have to be just something pleasant but it can also be something that's disturbing you or something that will give you um thoughts that you will question some things and i personally really like to to search also for that in arts so i really enjoy listening to to um pieces or or reading poetry that might not be only pleasant or always mm -hmm. lovely and nice i think that's just as life is you can have all sorts of facets and yeah mm. uh, to tap in all your emotions basically yes, yeah absolutely mm. but i think for me um when i perform and then afterwards somebody would come to me and say i i found this performance extremely disturbing it triggered like bad emotions it's not a bad thing for me a bad thing would be if somebody listens to me and afterward tells me that it was boring or they didn't feel anything oh yeah so yeah yes <laughs> oh that's interesting yeah because yeah it's, it's like somebody said to me uh once that um 
for him it's important to know that he touched somebody you know that just yeah that Absolutely. yeah yes um what i also talk about uh, is is education mm. because i'm thinking that if we want to change how people see art and experience art then we have to look at the education system and start teaching children art uh, as a main subject and not just as a side subject what is your absolutely. feeling about that absolutely i absolutely agree with that um I also have a couple of students um, and I am always very, um, it's very important for me to, to show children um, all different kinds of, of, of um, musical genres of, of uh, different kinds of, I'm talking about music, of course now, mm -hmm. but that can apply to all, all kinds of arts. Um, for me, it's also very important to show children, for instance, a big topic for me is extended playing techniques that, that you have mm -hmm. in contemporary music, where you uh, have all sorts of different interesting sounds. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's so important to, to open ears of, of children already to these kinds of things, because then, of course, later on, you can decide maybe this is not my cup of tea. But it's something that I already had, I have been in contact with and I could experience and I could, could uh, try. And um, my um, personal um, experience is that children are absolutely open to so many things, mm -hmm. really. So you just have to like show them away and, and, and be able to, to, to motivate them to dig deeper into something and um, as you said it for me it's a big tragedy that in schools uh, the, the topic of arts or music or whatever is always treated a bit like mm. a little extra yeah. so I could never understand for instance <laughs> no offense to 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 mathematics or something but yeah. <laughs> why we are really uh digging so deep into these kinds of, of topics um and subjects in school and there is almost nothing happening in in the fields of arts there could be so many more um projects workshops seminars for children that would really just open their eyes to different different things and um i think in austria um I noticed there is like one good thing maybe that a lot of uh, children at least start to, to, to play musical instruments. So they get a yeah. little bit of a connection with it. Because for instance, I'm originally from Poland. And um, if you want to start um, musical education in Poland, you have to go already as a little child, you have to go through um, a big um, selection so you have to go through uh, several exams so you can even attend musical school what i like here is that you can just um mm. yeah um start playing an instrument and at least like this you have a little bit of a connection maybe even if you stop after some time and if you don't become a professional musician yeah. or, or artist at all but you will maybe get this this love for mm. for the the subject and and I have many many um, friends with children who who bring their children to my concerts even when I play really um, very challenging pieces but um, I I think that's wonderful and I really think that um, you have to to feed children as yeah. many different kinds of things as possible and and they will they will soon fall in love with that, I think. And yeah. um, for me, it was interesting because my, my parents are not artists at all, um, but we were always surrounded with a lot of art in our home and they would always take me to concerts, to, to exhibitions. We had a lot of, of recordings at home, a lot of, of books. Um, there was a lot of poetry and so on and so on. And I remember, that I think I was about eight years old and I got a CD. I don't remember who, who gave me the CD, somebody from my 
a close family, and it was a CD of orchestra works by Krzysztof Penderecki, mm. which of course for an eight-year-old child might be a little <laughs> yeah, yeah. difficult to process, but I remember I absolutely fell in love with this music. And I remember even that uh, my friend and I, we were like drawing things while we were, and I'm, I'm terrible at drawing, it's <laughs> really bad, but we were listening to this CD and we would draw things that we would associate with this kind of like dark, mysterious uh, yeah. music. And um, maybe that was like one of the first encounters with, with contemporary mm -hmm. music that I had. And it must have left an impact on me. <laughs> yes, but I think it's never too early. And I'm not talking, of course, about only contemporary um, yeah. music or art, but all, all, all kinds. And I think it's so important to show children different uh, aspects. And you can also do it in a, in a nice, um, playful way kind of mm. so yeah. we are doing some projects with um, theater for children where we are using a lot of, of contemporary playing techniques also which for instance I get a lot of feedback like ah oh, when you made this sound it sounded like there was a ghost or whatever and yeah, I think yeah. that's a beautiful that's beautiful wonderful yeah yeah it's working and yeah so, and I think this, it's like you say that many, if, if you know, if you look at uh, music, for example, you think to, to enter a music school or, and, and I understand that, you know, so it's always this thing uh, where you almost think um, a child can only play an instrument if they will become an, a musician or, uh, you know, and, and I think the, the, uh, this, um, the way of thinking of it has to be perfect yes it has to be perfect for the musician to to pursue a career but for a child it has to be enjoyment as well and it just has to be it's like you say you didn't you were not a good at drawing but the music and the drawing you know it, it was sort of that thing and and I think it's almost it's I think it's even with art and with drawing you know, I remember when when I was in school, it was you could only take art. The, the the test was you had to draw a picture, and if the picture was not accurate enough, it you couldn't do the art classes. So um, you know, and and if I think back, but but art is not just about drawing, uh, you know, and and it's all these criteria that that are put there where that uh, that make children avoid doing it or make them think they are not good enough to do it and I think it's like you say just the different sounds just experiencing the sounds and experiencing the art form and maybe giving them a chance to express themselves how they feel uh, that would be yeah so it's wonderful that uh, to hear that you do this uh, with children I think it's you know I think it's the artist if 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 you could start these little planting these little seeds, you never know who you touch and you never know who, uh, it, as you say, they don't have to become musicians, but, but they can start the love for it and start the appreciation for the music. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. I even have um, students, um, former students who I used to teach a couple years ago and then they stopped playing because school and everything was too much. They never wanted to pursue this professionally, but they still up to this day come to so many concerts of mine and they yes, say they that, amazing. Yeah. yes, and I really love this or they tell me that now they have um, abonnement for this kind of concert cycle and that they're going like once a month. And this is really something where I feel like, okay, yeah. my job is done yeah <laughs> so yeah. No, yeah. definitely I think if it's it's by planting a seed you know just you just have to plant the seed and then it will other things will come and, and it will definitely grow um but tell me now um what is next for you and what is your wish for for the next uh, years because mm -hmm. I I assume everything is now over and uh, let's let's hope everything is now over yeah 
Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward for the next um, uh, weeks, months. I have some amazing projects coming up with with wonderful colleagues. Um, like the next thing, the, the very first concert that I'm going to be playing now is, if I remember well, June 18. This will be a duo recital with a wonderful pianist, Maciej Skarbek. Um, we will be playing uh, pieces by um, Brahms, Chopin, Debussy. Also, um, I snuck in some contemporary pieces as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so uh, that is the next thing. Um, I am really, really excited um, about um, the um, European Forum Alpach. Mm -hmm. in August, where I was um, um, art, um, I had an art scholarship uh, two years ago. And now this year, together with my colleagues, Flora Geiselbrecht and um, Hannes Schögel, we are going to um, be teaching a seminar, holding a seminar for yeah. uh, scholarship holders in Alpbach. And uh, yes, we will be talking about um, different kinds of sounds, experimenting with sounds, uh, teaching people basically how to truly listen and how so many sounds are really um, very valuable that we sometimes don't even experience as music. But um, you can basically take anything and, and make it into some form of art. Um, I am talking a lot about uh, ASMR which mm -hmm. are all those like very tiny soft sounds that can give you like a very pleasant feeling, um, calm you down and so on. So we want to do some um, experiments with, with people who are not musicians or not artists that yeah. they are kind of um, get this experience of how basically like a little um, do-it-yourself art kit for, wow. for home. <laughs> so Amazing. yes. Yeah. Yes, it's really, it's really a nice, very, very, very cool project. And um, of course, the European Forum Alpbach is a great, um, uh, great place to be. And, and um, there is a lot of, of um, um, con connections between people go yeah. going on. There are people from all over the world. Unfortunately, of course, this year it has to be a little bit limited because mm -hmm. of Corona oh, yeah. restrictions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are people from so many different fields, so there is a lot of exchange going on and um, already two years ago we met amazing people that we still kind of do some projects together and um, so so I'm really looking forward to this. This sounds amazing, yeah, this sounds wonderful. Yes, it's really a, a great thing and um, uh, we hope that maybe in the future we can really evolve this project and make it bigger and, and maybe bring it to, yes, also um, have this educational um, part to maybe yeah. work with, with children and with young mm -hmm. people. And yes, so that would be, that be, that be wonderful, yeah. Um, I, I would 100% support that. That I think that is great if if children could have that that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing that I'm really looking forward to is that um, now in this pandemic and in all the lockdowns, as I told you, I had a lot of time to to um, work on new pieces. So um, of course I was playing alone. So I tackled all the mostly contemporary solo pieces and yeah. my plan is to record um, a solo CD uh, in 2022 oh, where cool. I'll be recording pieces by um, Dutilleux, Vasque, Slutoswavsky, Berio so yeah this, this will be like a very personal thing for me because these are mm. all my my favorite pieces and mm. I'm really looking forward to to share this also with that's wonderful. And, and it will also be special because it was uh, 
during lockdown that you uh, worked on those pieces yeah absolutely yes some of the pieces i played already before yeah some of the pieces i i uh, completely learned uh, new but um, most of them i could really like I finally had this time to really pick them apart, to, to really polish all the tiny little details. And I think it's such an interesting way to work, which is not very realistic in a, a regular concert uh, life yeah. and yeah, yeah. where you have to prepare many pr different um, programs, many projects, you have to be very uh, fast. And mm -hmm. now I have this time to like really dig really very deeply into into all of that so also that's special. wonderful I, I think we we will all uh, think back on this time and find something you know and have some memory of this time because I think there were many many positive things I think m maybe some people cannot find them already but I think we will all in in a few years we will all look back and see why you know this was actually a important time yes so, yeah. yes i think it was mm -hmm. also something that maybe stopped us a little from this way of life where we run and want everything all at once there is so many yeah. things going on and i think our heads are just working yeah. all the time and suddenly there was a moment where we could all like really exhale and and take some time i'm very lucky i have a little terrace so i could like sit and and yeah. <laughs> do a lot of plants and and just enjoy um and and read a lot and and cook a lot <laughs> so oh, wonderful <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> um i i heard somebody said that she uh she actually went sometimes sit on a balcony and just watch a bumblebee and that was so nice that she had the time to do that you know yes. so it's these Beautiful, small yeah. tiny little things yeah absolutely yeah, yeah i think there are really we had possibilities to maybe to, to maybe pick up new hobbies also i talked to a lot of people who started doing things like some crafts i am absolutely terrible at that but um i for instance had been planning to um to take up uh french because i i had french lessons in school and i was planning yeah. to to continue doing this because i forgot everything and i mm -hmm. was having two french lessons online a week so i was like oh. reading, reading yeah. a lot of, of french books and watching french yeah. movies and oh I really and <laughs> did, did, did that help yeah yeah oh happened. really okay yes <laughs> oh wonderful so um yeah i also hear a lot of interesting things that people do and cooking is one of them you know most people and i think it was good for our health also you know that people yes. stopped and started cooking and and not i mean yes. i i know restaurants are very important and that we have to but i think it's also now um a good thing that you know that we could cook at home and um i met one of the, the one of the the artists that i had an interview with uh, from greece and he visited uh, vienna and we um but it was still when the restaurants were closed and i packed a uh, coffee and biscuits and we met in stadtpark and had a coffee mm -hmm. there and it was also yeah. nice just to do that and not just you know automatically go to a coffee shop so Absolutely. So I think those types of things we we should keep doing as well, you know, have the balance and and do yes. that. So. And find some creative solutions maybe sometimes and yeah. just be flexible. I think that's also a thing that, at least for me, I am really trying to control so many things always. So for mm -hmm. me, I always have my plan and I have to go like this step mm -hmm. by step and everything has to be perfect. But um I learned through some situations that some things cannot be controlled. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be flexible. And there were a couple of situations where where I had to learn it the hard way, but now I feel so much more free <laughs> somehow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think we all um this was the the worst nightmare really. 
for everybody and we we survived it you know and i think it's yes. and we all we all survived it you know all over the world so uh well i say in, in survived it but many people unfortunately passed away because of the pandemic but the, you know what i mean is that we we could cope in this time with even even that sad sadness and that sad part because it um, concerned all of us together exactly yeah. exactly but thank you so much for your time thank and, you um, i um i recorded this is it okay if i post it on youtube absolutely yes. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah very thank nice. you so much for your time thank you so much and yeah, i absolutely. hope to meet you in person one day yes yeah. i hope so too thank yeah. you for asking me it's, i i really think it's an amazing thing that you're doing that you're also trying to to put the spotlight on on artists in those times it's really very oh, thank special you so thing. much thank you thank so much you. it means a lot to me uh, thank you so much for your time and have a lovely afternoon thank you you too and hope okay. to hear soon and we'll again. talk soon we'll talk yes soon. okay <laughs> goodbye bye